Hello, and welcome to Quality Policing. I am Peter Moskos, and I am back again with um, Jeff Asher, who is a data analyst, and um, I'm actually not certain of your full title. Maybe you can, what do you do for a living, Jeff? I'm a consultant. I do uh, help organizations to understand data and analysis, and um, you know, really looking for sort of the bottom of the barrel organizations that have no idea what they're doing. And we'll bring, we bring them to sort of the amateur level um, and help organizations to understand largely in the criminal justice sector, what, what data is available to them, how they can organize it and what they can be doing. Good, good. Um, I know you as do many because you're just one of the most, uh, I don't know, respected, um, uh, I don't the word because it's not because you are a professional analyst but you kind of do a lot of this on your free time and you look at data <laughs> and, and collect it and analyze it in ways that it would be nice if the government were paying you to do um but but you're an excellent source for all things um, related to crime data and uh, i've asked you to come on today to talk about the change in the reporting system can you explain well maybe i can <clears throat> and you you might know more about this than i do but so traditionally the ucr the uniform crime report started around 1930 maybe 1931 uh is the national clearinghouse for crime data um, because of the time it was started, you know, it has arson as a, one of the part one, the major crimes, which isn't, you know, so common today, but shootings, for instance, aren't specifically categorized, which is mm -hmm. my annoyance. Um, it's a voluntary reporting system. Somehow there's some coercion because most departments do it, but um, there, there's an issue of, as the data goes up the chain from how the cop responding to the scene categorizes it, then the department has to record it, and then the department has to send it in a different format, usually, to the um, UCR, which is run by the FBI or somehow related to them. And, uh, and then, you know, <clears throat> uh, nine months after the year in which the data is supposed to be out there, the UCR finally publishes it. So, for instance, we still don't have um, official 2020 crime data because it won't be out till September when it's much less useful. Um, so that is the current system. Um, did I miss something important there? Uh, no, that, that's about it. Um, it's big and it's clunky and it was, it was built, uh, ironically, to make it so that agencies could say to journalists that their crime is not out of control. Um, that was that was a major function of not of uh, UCR originally, um, and the way that people think of UCR is really um, is known as SRS. And I, oh my god, I'm suddenly blanking on uh, what SRS stands for. It's the summary reporting system. Sorry about that. Um, and so under the summary reporting system, there's seven categories. Arson's one of them, but it's so underreported that. The, the FBI doesn't even estimate the numbers nationally. Um, and then the second system really is called NIBRS, which is what my recent piece was about. It was um, created in 1991 and it has been almost experimental to this point. It obviously started with zero agencies. This last year, 48% of agencies in 2019, 48, which is the last year we have data for right now, 48% of agencies that are eligible to report reported via NIBRS, 90% um, of agencies report overall. So you're getting, and, and they, you know, they finagle the numbers so that the NIBRS numbers match up with the SRS numbers and you get national estimates. Um, but basically we've got 90% of agencies are reporting via the normal system that we've done since 1929 and less than half as of the last time we reported, we're doing it via this new system. And then they turned off the SRS, they turned off the old system on January 1st of this year. And now all of the 2021 data agencies are only supposed to report via NIBRS. Um, that seems like we're gonna have bad data for 2021. Well, yeah, it's, it's um, the, the best number I could get. I, I personally FBI got this in February of 2020. And we were talking about setting up a meeting and then it, you know, obviously coronavirus happened and we sort of put that to the side. Um, and this past about a year later, I, I contacted them again and sent them a bunch of questions and they didn't reply. Um, 
I did get an answer from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, which says that there was a survey last April which suggested 75% of agencies wanted to report via NIBRS um, or were committed to reporting via NIBRS, but we don't know exactly how many actually did report via NIBRS. So if our, if our top line is 75%, that means there's an extra 15% of agencies that aren't gonna be reporting via NIBRS that we have to account for somehow. And that's basically gonna be a guess. Um, yeah. So this you know, year's numbers are going to be It's probably important to point out that the agencies that tend not to report tend to be smaller agencies. So while 15% of agencies may not report, it doesn't mean that 15% of the data is missing. Uh, so that's sort of the good news. The bad news is we don't know about the random element of the missing data, and that creates problems. And, and we, don't, we don't actually know where the agencies are going to be. Um, New Orleans, where I'm from, is not going to report via NIBRS because their record management system is so old that they can't match it up. Um, so that, that's a huge technical issue. And they're supposedly getting a new RMS, but they're, so they're just not going to report to NIBRS until they get this new RMS. And you know how tech projects in, in law enforcement agencies can, can take a little bit of time. What um, are the advantages? A bunch of states like California. I'm sorry, you can go, go on, but, I'm, but if you can get to, yeah, why, why is the switch being made? Yeah, so there's there's seven, there's also seven states that are not NIBRS compliant. So until those states are NIBRS compliant, allegedly this year, but who actually knows, um, then those, like California won't be reporting via NIBRS until they're NIBRS compliant. So um, the advantages are that there's a lot more details in there. Uh, normally you get very bare minimum of details, just offenses happen. Um, and so you would get, uh, you, you know, you could count how many murders there were. Murder, we sometimes got a little more details. Robberies, you know, you got maybe the a little bit of locations, but there's a lot of details in there. And the example I gave is that you can tell in a state how many uh, kidnappings happened at a daycare center. Instead of just seven categories of crime where you're getting crime numbers, you're getting, I want to say, 32 categories of crime where these, these more minor crimes that weren't considered major by UCR, where now we can actually track them. The other advantage is that uh, UCR had, or SRS had this thing called the hierarchy rule, which meant that only the most serious offense was counted. So we're counting murder every time. But if uh, you rob me and then you murder me, um, it's only counted as a murder. If a burglar breaks into your home and you beat the crap out of them, or and, you know, it might be considered an aggravated, I guess that's not a crime. If a burglar breaks into your home and beats the crap out of you, that's an aggravated assault. The burglary is not counted. And so um, under SRS, we were getting an incomplete picture. In theory, this will give us a more complete picture. Um, you get like, if you wanna see how many drugs were seized in a state or in a city over the course of a year, you can, you can see over time and you can track things over time. So it's an enormous amount of data. It's a little bit unwieldy. It's like each year is like 6 million rows of data, whereas the entirety of UCR is about a million years. So, so almost 60 years worth of UCR is, is a million rows. Um, so we're collecting an enormous amount of data. It's just not really gonna be comparable to what we've gotten before, which is challenging um, because it's it's sort of a challenging time to be switching up the crime reporting system. Um, there, even, nice. even even with a bad system, there's there's great value in consistency. So you can compare a year to year, um, and so this year is going to sort of be a new a breaking point and a new start. Um, I guess it's yeah, got to happen much. sometime, but it would have been nice if it happened, say, in you know 2014 when things were calmer. Yeah, and it. It, yeah, it would be nicer. And it, it was sort of a, you know, burn the bridges when you get to, to the foreign land type thing where they, they're just not reporting via the old system. And so, so it would be nice if we had more energy there. When I look at, so um, there's, this is a, we, we, we can get nerdy and technical. That's what we're here for. Um, so when, to say how it is now, when, when I look at a UCR row, it's, it's incident based. So it's one incident and this relates to the hierarchy rule. Um, but if you're trying to figure out, say, uh, incidents where there are multiple victims on um, the way currently is, I mean, you know this, I'm just explaining it to, to the listeners, uh, is there different columns that'll say number of victims and then there's, you know, victim one through nine and it takes up a lot of space and there are usually zeros for those things for two through nine. 
Um, but so you, in theory, you can tease out that data. But I think most people, quite frankly, who download UCR data don't tease it out because they just don't understand it. So you don't get so cases where there are multiple shooting victims are more hard to get. And I think there's a lot of rep I think a lot of that data is just wrong for some reason is from my is my own experience that multiple victims and so on. But the, the point is, it's all in one row, one incident in one row, no matter what happened during that incident. Is that going to be different now? Or how, how, how does that work? Well, so it'll be each incident. Um, and it'll tell you what the offense was. And you can have up to 10 offenses in an incident. And then it'll tell you the details of that offense. And you can break it down. Um, you can see uh, the numbers that were cleared by exception. You can see the weapons that were there. I'm just, I'm, you know, I've got right here. I've got the, uh, I don't know if you want me to share this. Can I share my screen? I think so. Let's see. So this is just the state of Colorado. Um, and you can see all of the details that you get that you don't get with, um, with regular. And it gives you the, um, so th this is the, this isn't the raw stuff. This is the sort of collected stuff from them. Um, but all types of information that like, you know, it, it depends on what your research question is, what the thing that you want to know is, it might be a little difficult to collect all the data, but the idea is that the data is there. And if you do have something that you want to look for, um, if you want to see the relationship between people, you want to see the type of weapons that were held, you want to see the type of drugs that were seized, you want to see the types of injuries that happened, you want to see um, incidents that were cleared by exception. You want to see the circumstances of victimization, all sorts of different things that you just weren't getting with under SRS. And I, it's uh, so cleared by exception means uh, that um, it's basically covers everything in which the case is no longer being investigated, but the suspect wasn't arrested. Often it means the witness is dead. Sometimes it means the witness, I mean, not, not the witness, the the criminal uh, is dead. Sometimes it means um, the person is in prison for another offense and they're just not gonna bother working on the other offense. So it's everything in which um, the person is not arrested and potentially charged, it's cleared by exception. Yeah, it's, it's basically any time where you know who the person was but you're not arresting them. Um, if the prosecution is denied for non, you know, not just because we didn't have probable cause for like sort of, um, for good reasons that it, it doesn't seem like that person did it. Um, if the person died, if you murder somebody and you go to, to Jackson, Mississippi and murder somebody there and you're arrested in Jackson, and I know that you murdered somebody in Louisiana, but you're in jail in Jackson and you're not coming back um, because they're gonna try you there, it's cleared by exception. Um, if you're dead or if the, you know, usually if, uh, if I'm a homeowner, you break in my house, I shoot and kill you that's considered clear by exception there because it's justifiable. Um, it so understands. all sorts of different reasons. Um, and are we, does, does this whole change leave you with um, hope? Is it like, it, given that there are inherent problems with switching and, and the fact that states aren't compliant, which I didn't know actually, that's, that seems like a big deal if California is not compliant, um, is this, is this good? Would you have designed a better system? Or maybe you helped design this system for all I know. Like, how, are, are we pleased with the change if it and when it works? Um, I mean, it, yes, I, I mean, I like it. It, it uh, the challenge, the, the main challenge is that we still don't have shootings um, and that it doesn't match up. It's not gonna match up with previous years and we don't have full compliance when we want it. We don't so, have shootings that Like for me as a normal, Shootings are the one thing I sort of care about in my analysis and one. And so that doesn't change, huh? Exactly. Um, and so it's, it, yeah, so it, it's got its positives, but it's got its negatives as well. It's certainly an advantage over SRS, but it's like the type of thing that like asked me in 10 years, um, the, next, the next five to 10 years might suck for, to be someone that looks at crime data and tries to communicate stories where, you know, hey, our, 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 uh, burger, our auto thefts are through the roof. Well, no, they were just not counting auto thefts because they were happening during other crime. They were happening, you know, they were, they were, there were other things that were happening and they were, so really they're just counting more auto thefts because the same number happened and they're just counting them more. Um, I think the, the fun stories of someone that likes to communicate crime data is the stories where you say, this is happening. This is why it might be happening. This is an important trend we need to pay attention to. 
the less fun trends are, yes, this looks like X, but in reality, it's just because your data sucks. Um, and, you know, like 80% of the stories that I have to tell are, uh, I'm working on a piece on hate crimes right now. It's like, well, yes, hate crimes are up, but that's just because the number of agencies that are reporting are up. And it's, you know, you can, there's no trend in hate crimes that is, that is determinable from the available data. It's just, it's not something we should be trying to evaluate. So um, yeah, that I think it. is going to be the issue with NIBRS is building an understanding that the system has changed and that there are advantages for people like me, but for like the random Joe Schmo on the streets, it's probably going to be a little while before that person is able to understand exactly what's going on. Does any, anything about this change, is anything going to um, increase the turnaround time? Any chance we'll get, you know, first half year data before the year is done, or is that not part of the plan? Well, so last year they started doing quarterly data. So they have quarterly data for 2020 out. Which they did, through, as through you the know, quarter. they did quarterly data in the 1930s. Um, it's amazing that we can't <laughs> do that. monthly now. data in the 1930s. Um. So I, I don't know how it's going to, but it's all been under SRS. So if you've got more data to collect, I don't know if they're going to do numbers of offenses through NIBRS per quarter. Um, it would be nice. I, NIBRS actually takes longer to compile and is out later than SRS. Um, but it's plausible that if they don't have to deal with SRS, NIBRS will be faster to get out. Um, it's hard to say. And... You know, well, that could really be a funding know. issue too at the federal levels. Presumably, the, they'll stop cutting money for um, this type of data collection, at least, which would be good. Yeah, I, mean, I, I hope it's not as slow as the, the lack of shootings and the lack of timeliness are the two things that, and the lack of, of, uh, of sort of specificity in crime are the three problems that I have with SRS. This solves the specificity issue. It doesn't inherently solve the other two major issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so shootings, I mean, in theory, you can get shootings from data by, you look for you look for homicides and aggravated assaults, felony assaults, and then you look at it if there's a weapon in the columns. And, and you know, you can tease it out. The problem is, is when you do that is, is sometimes cities simply don't, you know, there'll be a crime and, and the weapon isn't listed in the initial report or somehow it doesn't make it up. So that data does not correlate well with when you actually have accurate shooting data from cities. Um, so we know that isn't good and unfortunately probably won't get better then. Um, and it's a lot of it is, of course, we don't know, we don't know the departments that record it, you know, do it correctly and those that don't and um, geez. If, if, yeah, so, if, if, <laughs> if you're a small, if you are running a small police department and listening to this, um, do you know at that on the input level what that, what that means for whoever is delegated to compile and turn over this data? Any, any advice for small police departments that have to deal with this change? Um, no, I mean, I guess automating it as best as possible. You know, there are still agencies that count SRS by hand. This system in theory is better set up to be automated because like there's no hierarchy rule. Um, you just report everything that happened. So if you have a form that then you, in theory, you could do all this on Google Forms. I mean, it, it shouldn't be, uh, it's more complex, but it shouldn't be more complicated. Um, and so hopefully if agencies are able to automate, then it makes everything a lot easier. Um, and in theory, automating everything makes it possible to get it out quicker. Um, but, you know. So it would require we're, we're in the last making a new form that has these categories, um, which I don't think, I, I, yeah, which realistically isn't going to happen because, you know. Well, you got the DOJ is, is putting it together. You know, there's there's set forms to do. Um, it's just a matter of, of, I think, where there's a will, there's a way. And so I wonder if there's a will from, from DOJ to, to get this to happen. I hope there is. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else? I want to keep this short and sweet. It's, no, a, it's, so. a, it's a niche topic. <laughs> it's very niche. It's, yeah, I, I, I sent the story to my editor. He's like, oh, this is wonky. We like it. <laughs> so Good. I so you had a piece uh, last week, earlier this week, in the Washington Post, um, which New York Times. New York Times. I'm sorry, um, that people can feel free to Google uh, Jeff Asher, New York Times, and well, you'll, you'll see a lot of stuff for Jeff. Uh, you're you're yeah. <laughs> prolific in that way, which is good. Um, 
Other than that, it was good to see you. Hang in there, and um, and yeah. thanks for uh, thanks for being on here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. This has been Quality Policing, and uh, I am Peter Moskos, and many thanks to Jeff Asher. Ooh.